Yep, it's that time again. In this case, October patching. So whilst we're waiting for those machines to finish patching, let's show you something slightly more interesting. I'm going to create a function and I'm going to create the function with an exit code. Now, the principle behind this is it's a value that's returned after the function has run so that you can capture it. Now, there is a reason for this that you might want to do this. And it's very simple, really. It's that you want to find out whether the function ran correctly or not. So you might say, if this value exists, then it ran, or if this value doesn't exist, then it didn't run, and or multiple error codes. So you might say, hey, if the error code is this, then I know that chunk of the function failed. But we're just doing some very simple and basic ones here by creating a function. Now, we can also set within that to change the output. So let's say as an example, uh, we have an if statement and the if statement contains something like if this machine value equals that. So in this case, the computer name, um, then we can change the output from one to another. So as an example, our original output was 101. But we're going to say if the machine name equals desktop lab, which happens to be the machine name, um, then the output is going to be, let's say, 12. Just for argument's sake, you know, we need a number. And then based on that, we'll be able to capture that into a value into one of our strings. So we know then if the value is 12, then the computer name is the same. If it's 101, then it's anything else other than that. Which obviously is not the greatest in terms of function, but you get the general idea that you can capture these, which allows you to then build logic later into how your functions and scripts run and modules, that if part of it fails, you'll be aware that that part failed and can build additional actions around it without needing to just simply hide the errors from the end user. So we can now say, as an example, that if our i is not equal to 12, then we know that it errored. So we can write out the error. So we can write to the host in this case. But equally, I could say, OK, if it errored, then run this action. So this might be a case of, hey, I checked, and it errored, and I suspect it errored because service is not started. So I might have, OK, run the service, and then try again. So you can build all kinds of logic into this. And it's very simple to have this if else type scenario and build very complex and powerful scenarios that allow you to basically build entire workflows on top of this. So the success is another example. We can have success instead of numbers. Now that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. And as always, subscribe for more content.